Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Monday, November 30th, 2020, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, December 1st. Futures uh, currently are up uh, pretty nicely. We had a great month in November, best month since 1987, and it looks like December could get off to a good start as well based on current futures. Um, let's take a look before uh, we get into anything today. I want to go through the agenda um, and just go over some of the things that we're going to talk about. I'll get into uh, the daily market recap, uh, give you uh, my thoughts on the action on Monday, then uh, go into talking technically. I got a couple of the sector ETFs I want to take a look at. I get questions from time to time on the PPO and how I use the PPO. So I think this might help to illustrate a little bit how I use the PPO in my trading. Then I'm going to get into break it down. I'm going to take a look at the communications um, sector. Um, so we'll see uh, what kind of, uh, um, you know, look at some of the areas within communication services to see, uh, you know, maybe some areas that uh, you might want to consider focusing on as we move into December. Uh, then I'll get into chart lists. I'm going to talk a little bit about our strong earnings chart list and uh, show you a little bit how I use that. Then uh, earnings spotlight. One big company reporting after the close today um, was Zoom, uh, ticker symbol ZM. Uh, that is a, a pretty big stock in that technology area. And I uh, just wanted to go through and go th uh, look at those numbers and talk a little bit about that stock because it has been such a huge winner in 2020. And the numbers were, to be quite honest, very impressive once again. Uh, guidance raised, but we'll take a look at that in a bit. And then uh, we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Um, we've got a breakout in there and uh, show you a little bit about gap fills and how it, if you're patient um, after gap ups, many times you can find some much, much better entry points. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the three you must see. But first, before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. If you'd like to become part of our uh, community, you can subscribe to our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. This is published three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday mornings, usually before the market opens. Uh, there's no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. It's completely free, very educational, looks mostly at uh, relative strength and earnings. Also, if you'd like to join our paid service, there's the green Join Today button. I uh, would love to have you come in, take a look at our service. It's a fully refundable $7 charge uh, for 30 days. And um, so essentially it's a no cost 30, uh, 30 day offer. And you can take a look at our portfolios, uh, which are based really on putting together 10 equal weighted leading stocks from 10 different leading industry groups. And uh, you can see the results there, which I think speak for themselves. All right, let's move on and take a look at what happened on Monday. Um, first, Dow Jones Industrial down 271 points, although that was off of the low. Uh, S&P 500 down about 16 points, a little less than one half of 1%. NASDAQ uh, flirted with going positive. It was actually up early and then it went down and then came back. And so on a uh, uh, relative basis, NASDAQ held up pretty well on Monday, which was good news. Mid caps down almost 2%, small caps down more than 2%. So we did see some selling, more selling there but they are way above their 20 day moving averages. So that's what I would be concerned with is maybe watching those 20 day EMAs. And we still have some room there. In terms of sector performance, technology up uh, two thirds of 1%. So really good move in technology. Uh, again, I'll talk about that uh, in just a couple minutes when we get into the talking technically area. Healthcare uh, rose also up about a quarter of 1%. Came down and is testing pretty key support area. We had a double top breakout back at the beginning of November. We've come back down now testing that area and testing the 20 day EMA. I wouldn't be surprised to see healthcare move higher from here. Energy uh, heading in the opposite direction down five and a half percent. Of course, this is the group that has been on absolute fire in the month of November. So we uh, saw a little profit taking to close out the month. I would again, just watch that rising 20 day, see if we can hold that. As far as industry groups go, the leading industry group was the publishers index. Uh, this was up about five and a third percent, uh, clearly in breakout mode. This is a group that's done very well or did very well during the month of November and closed it out in style. And then you've got the uh, expiration stocks. I mentioned the energy had a rough day. Well, here was a big part of it. 
the expiration uh, stocks down about six and three quarter percent, still above that rising 20 day. But uh, we, you can see over the past few days, we've gone up quite a bit of those gains that we saw earlier in November. 10-year Treasury yield. Um, it was relatively flat on Monday. Uh, I'm kind of watching this gap support here, uh, about 0.82%, the rising 50-day moving average, which is almost at 080 I think if you connect these lows, you'll see we're sitting almost right on a trend line. So all in all, I think this pullback at this point is fine. Uh, I would be looking for a push back to the upside though. I think that would be bullish for US equities if we see the 10 year treasury yield rally because that will be suggesting that we're seeing some selling in treasuries, which normally we see that money rotate out of treasuries and into US equities. Um, on Tuesday, we do have a couple of economic reports. November PMI manufacturing will be out. Uh, the estimates for 56.7. October was 53.4, so we're looking for that to heat up a little bit. November ISM manufacturing, however, looking to cool off. October is 59.3, and November we're expecting 57.5. And then finally, October construction spending. September rose three-tenths of 1%. We're looking for that to jump to eight tenths of 1% in October. So those are some of the uh, economic reports that could have an impact on the bond market. All right, moving on, talking technically. So I mentioned the PPO and I'm gonna first pull up, this is only a three month chart because I really want you to be able to see the PPO. But on technology, uh, the XLK, you can see the big move to open up November and then notice the PPO crosses back above the zero line at this high. So it's once it's above the zero line and rising, it means that we're starting to build bullish momentum. Anytime the PPO is above the zero line, I think bullish. When it's below the zero line, I think bearish. Now, in this case, it was simply sideways consolidation, but you have to respect a PPO that's below the center line because you don't know for sure it's coming back up above. And if it stays below, that normally leads to uh, much more selling. So here we came back above it, which was good. But when you see the action, when we see this, this uh, positive action, we see the PPO go back positive, we don't know if we're gonna break out or if we're just gonna simply sideways consolidate longer. Um, and, and one of the problems with moving averages is they don't really provide support during a period of consolidation. Moving averages generally provide a support during a period of rising prices. So here, when we come back down for the first time to that 20 day EMA, I like to watch to see if we bounce off of it. Because if we can bounce off of it and start to move back up again, that starts to look more like a trending market rather than a consolidating market. So that's why I think it's really important to follow, even when you're going sideways like this, do we hold that 20 day? If you look back into October, when we were moving up, the PPO was positive. We went back, we tested the 20, and then we kept going lower. However, in November, we came down, we tested that 20 day, and we started moving back higher. Notice the next time we came down and tested on the 23rd of November, the PPO was still well above the zero line. We went back, we held it, and now we're moving above this prior high. PPO is breaking to a new high. Right now, the XLK is telling me that there is a pretty good chance that we are trending to the upside. Now that's not confirmed until we get a breakout. I wanna see us take out that September high. We haven't done that yet. As long as we trade beneath that September high, we could always see the X XLK move back down to these previous lows. I mean, it, that's just rectangular consolidation. But for now, in the short term, these tests of the 20 day I find very bullish. Now let me give you an, uh, a different sector. And this is the XLU. And I want you to take a look at the difference here. So here on this three month chart, let's look back into late September, early October, we move up. Here's the PPO crossing into positive territory. Now, well, first time we come back down and we test that 20 day, we go a little bit below, but generally we hold it. We don't really, we don't go all the way back down to the 50. We go down, we close just a little bit below the 20. The next day we close on the 20, we close a little bit below the 20 and then right back up to a new high. Now, in this case, as we move to a new high, the PPO has not yet broken above that prior high. On top of that, that's a shooting star candle. So off of this uptrend, we had a gap up 
an intraday move to the upside. And then we came all the way back down and closed at the low. And we did so on the heaviest volume we had seen in a couple of months, actually more than a couple of months. This was the heaviest volume I can see on this three month chart until a few days later. Um, so when you get a reversing candle and you have a lower PPO, that suggests negative divergence. So we got the higher prices, we got the lower PPO, and that starts to tell me, think 50-day test, not 20-day test, 50-day test, and think centerline reset. That's what uh, initially is triggered technically when I see this development. When I see a negative divergence, reversing candle, I, I don't look for a bounce, the 20. It can happen. Many times it does happen, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not going to trade it thinking it's going to bounce right off the 20 like I would ordinarily because there's a negative divergence. Negative divergence isn't this horrible thing. It's just a technical uh, suggestion that momentum is slowing. And if momentum is slowing, then we need to maybe pause for a little bit longer. And a lot of times that pausing for a little bit longer results in a 50-day test and a PPO centerline test. And that's where we are right now on the XLU. Now, I'm okay with the XLU as long as we hold. I mean, you can see price support right here. We were bouncing off of $62. Prior, we had gotten up to about $61, just under $61. We'll probably stretch this out a little bit and see if there was another level to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, right here, you can see back in August, we were up over 61, 61 and a half. Look back to June, we got as high as 62. So the pullback that we saw here was the 62. So there's your high of 62, which was a resistance level. We broke out and we hold, hold 62. So now I'm looking at 50-day test, PPO centerline test, and I'm watching $62 price support. Those are the th things that I you know, now am focused on on the XLU chart. It's different than the XLK. So, and I wrote about the XLU in our daily market report to members last week. And I suggested that, you know, we're probably going to be looking at a 50 day test. So this is what technical analysis does for me. Um, it's not a guarantee. It doesn't ever guarantee us anything. It simply tells me what to look for. Um, tells me that the odds of maybe a bit more selling uh, have grown with that negative divergence and with that reversing candle. And you can see as we went up and kept trying to go higher, we never took out that high from that reversing candle. And these higher closes still never generated a higher PPO. That's a negative divergence. I mean, if you look back here in early August, we printed a new high. PPO never got to a new high, negative divergence. We went back to the 50. We went back to the center line, went a little bit below the center line. And we consolidated for a while. Then we started up again. So it's rinse and repeat, and that's what I look for. All right, let's move on. I want to uh, talk a little bit about break it down. So this is a segment that I always enjoy doing with um, when I did Market Watchers. Um, I don't know, probably a year ago, year and a half, well, a little over a year ago um, on Stock Charts TV. And so this was a regular segment. I, I, I take a top-down approach. So I'll look at the sector, and then I'll start working my way down towards stocks. And, you know, honestly, there's a number of different ways to approach this. But I'm going to start off by pulling up the seasonality on the XLC because we're getting ready to go into December. So I might as well see what, what December looks like. Well, over the last five years, number one, this is actually only the last four years for December because we're looking at 2016 through 2020. We haven't had December of 2020 yet. So there's only four of the years in December that we're looking at. Three of the four went higher. So XLC is already showing a tendency to move higher, but that one year it was down must have been fairly significant. Actually, it was. It would have been 2018 when we had the trade war. Um, but if you drag this back for all 14 years, you can see the XLC has gone up 69% of December's and has averaged going up 1.7%. And if we compare this to the S&P 500 over the last uh, 14 years, you will see that the XLC has actually outperformed the S&P 500 almost four out of every five Decembers, averaging 1.2% above the S&P 500 return 
for the month of December. And when you look across the, you know, entire calendar year, only May and October are better than December in terms of their average outperformance in communication services. And no month has shown the tendency to beat the S&P 500 more than December for communication services. 77% of December's we've seen the XLC outperform the S&P 500. 69% in January, 62% in February. I mean, you know, 1.2% is the average return over and above the S&P 500 on the XLC during, this, during September. Look at February or January and February, another seven tenths of 1% and eight tenths of 1% with the, the odds of it happening of, of the XLC outperforming the S&P 500 well above 50%, almost 70% in January and over 60% in February. So my point here is that seasonality is telling us that this tends to be a pretty good time of the year for the XLC, not only on an absolute basis, but also on a relative basis. So with that, let's take a look at the XLC on a chart. I'm gonna pull up this chart where I've got the PPO. So here you can see as we're making this move up, we've just broken above September high. We've got the PPO now moving up from the center line, setting new highs. Look at the, you know, as we pull back, we're holding that rising 20 day EMA. This is telling me that the XLC is trending higher. We've now broken out. And when we do pull back, we hold that rising 20 day EMA. Look at, you know, back in April and May, same thing. We were breaking out. Notice we were holding until we get up here and we start to roll over on the PPO. Not really a negative divergence at any point, but we rolled over, went back to the center line and we started doing it again. Same thing, moving up, pulling back, holding the 20 day. So this is giving me indication that we're trending higher. So this is a group I want to look at. Now, we could do it a number of different ways. If you go into the dashboard and I go into sectors, um, we can pull up communication services by various um, industry group. And you can look at the very, you know, the recent period. So we can say, okay, what's been leading over the last week? Media agencies, publishing, internet. Uh, if we go back a month, publishing, media agencies, broadcasting it, and right down the line, you can see very strong action. We could go all the way year to date. Internet's been the leader throughout the year. Um, but the point is, you know, which of these groups do we want to really focus on? Well, I'll go back one more time to the seasonality and I'm gonna pull up the internet area. Because if we look at internet, you can see 74% of the time, internet goes higher in December and it averages going up by 1.4%. January is only 58%, still more than 50-50 and it goes up on average more than 1%. So I would say that, you know, this is a group that we certainly want to key in on. Now, again, we could look at it relative to the S&P 500 and December is about 53% of the time, a little bit more than 50-50 and it averages outperforming the S&P 500 by about 1%. And then the numbers grow in the month of January. 63% of the time we beat the S&P and we beat it by an average of 1.2%. So internet looks like a pretty good area to me. And so then I'm gonna pull it up on a chart and take a look at what the chart is showing us. All right, so here we move up to a new high. Look at this, we pull back and we test that 20 day EMA and we start to move higher again. So I think as we move into the month of December, I think technically we look good here. Seasonally, I think we look good. I mean, it's not a huge month. December, I think I showed you 53% of the time, we outperform the S&P 500, but we do average, the average return is almost 1% above the S&P 500. So internet stocks do well in December. Um, and that strength gets even better and stronger in January. So this is a group that I would absolutely be interested in. So now that we've got to this point, where do you go from here? So now we've gone through and we've looked at the sector and we like the sector. We've looked at the, the this particular industry group. We like the industry group. What can we do? Well, I'm gonna show you just a quick scan that you can run. Um, this is really simple. Just click on new scan. Um, 
All right, I'll go ahead and maybe say 200,000 shares at, on average over the last 50 days. We want to at least average 200,000 shares. And we want to look at stocks. Um, and then you can come down here and you can select internet right here under communication services, add it. And then maybe one other filter, maybe it's a scooter. Maybe you only want to look at scooters say above 80. Um, so there's the default at 90, but we go ahead and we add that 80, check our syntax. We're good and then run the scan. We've got nine entries here that we could consider taking a look at. And I sort it by scooter. We got Pinterest, Snap, Upwork, Cardlytics, Eventbrite, Yandex, Spotify, Interactive Corp, and Take Two Interactive. Now, some of these stocks are fairly new, um, but if you see this little snowflake, that's your seasonality. So you could go in and take a look at some of these just to see what their long term track record. Um, now I'm going to go down to the bottom because I know Take Two Interactive has been around for a little while. Um, and so let's pull this back and just take a look. Now, in December, it's only gone up 42% of the time and it's lost 2.6%. So I think Take Two seems to be stronger as we go into the new year. And you can see these percentages going up. You can see the returns very, very strong the first several months of the year. So Take Two might be something I would consider in January. But that's just, you know, one of the ways that we can, um, you know, do this, you know, break it down. This is just another way to break down a sector starting at the top. Um, now, I did it, you know, using the scooter and so forth. You could go in and, you know, another way to, to do this is to say, okay, let's go to the scooter report right here. And under large cap stocks, if you just go to the search box and type in internet, and it gives you the stocks in scooter order. And here are your seasonality if you want to pull that up. But you might say, you know what? Small caps are really strong right now. Small caps have been strengthened. Let's look at the small cap internet stocks. And there you've got Upwork, Eventbrite. Um, oh, internet is in the name there. So uh, that one I would, I would just ignore. That's a bank stock, but it pulled it because of internet. But then you can go right down the list and look at some of these others. Here's one, but it doesn't have many shares traded. Um, but how about Boingo Wireless, WIFI? Um, this one has started to strengthen. Um, had a pretty good day on Monday, so might not be the greatest time to, uh, to consider entry, but it's one that does appear to be uh, strengthening as we move into the end of the year. And again, if we go back to that scooter report and we pull the stock up on its over the last 10 years, it's only gone up 22% of the time in December. So December is not a good month for this stock. Once again, as we get into the next year, it seems to have a better track record. But this, you know, most, there's a lot of uh, months where it's under 50%. So when I see something like that, probably tells me that this is not a stock that has a great long-term track record in the market in general. So if I pull up the chart and then we go back, say 15 monthly years, yeah, I mean, you can see, I mean, we're right where we were back in 2011. So we had this one good stretch of about two and a half years. Other than that, this really hasn't been a great stock. And so I, I personally, for me, I'd, I'd most likely avoid a stock like this. I mean, when it's been around for nine years and hasn't gone anywhere since it's IPO, uh, that tells me I'm probably better off looking for something else. All right, let's move on. I want to go into the chart list, talk about this just for a minute. Um, so if we take a look at my strong earnings chart list, one of the things I like to do, and I'll just show you, let me pull up the edit here so you can see right now we have 493 stocks on this chart list. So that's a lot of companies. These are all companies that have beat revenue and earnings per share estimates in their last quarter. They're liquid. So they trade at least on average about 200,000 shares or more. And technically I liked something about the chart either the, the, the company itself, or maybe I liked the peer group that it was in. Maybe I just liked the market reaction to its earnings. There was something I liked about it, and that's why it's on this list. Now, if we go back and we take a look at the chart list, um, what I like to do is put it in summary form like this, uh, which is just, uh, if you click on this and hit that summary, that's what brings this up. And you can see, you know, this starts off, I'm, I'm sorting it by percentage change from the bottom. So these are the ones that have been hit the hardest. 
Now, I did take a quick look, and I'll just show you MGI, for instance, is a stock that's been down now for four days. It was up at $9. It was in a huge uptrend. Well, after four days of selling, it's back at its 20-day moving average. Closed one penny above it today. Now, is this stock guaranteed to go higher? Of course not. But I like my odds better at $6.78 than I did at $9 because it has pulled back. This is where buyers came back in, right around six eighty, dollars um, whatever that low was you know, a week and a half ago. Um, so that's one. I thought there might have been one other one on here. Well, NEO has been just you know, crazy. Finally, is pulling back a little bit, but this stock's just been on fire. Um, but it too is coming back, getting close to its rising 20-day moving average. We'll see whether or not it can hold. All right, let's move on to earnings. Um, really, the only company that I wanted to point out here, there are a number of companies coming out later this week, but Zoom. Um, Zoom reported after the close today, and I'll tell you, the numbers were big. 99 cents in terms of their earnings, 99 cents. Market was expecting 75 cents, so an easy beat. The revenue, 777 million. Market was expecting 694 million. They guided their revenues higher. They guided their earnings per share higher. What did all that get them? Uh, last time I looked, stock was down 5% after hours. And the primary reason for it is that they're projecting their revenue growth next quarter to only only be about 320%. Whereas recent quarters, it's been like 360, 370%. So they're starting to see that growth maybe plateau. Um, but my gosh, you can't keep growing at 370%. There's nothing wrong with 320%. So I have a feeling if it does pull back, we'll probably see some buyers come in uh, sooner rather than later would be my guess. Um, looking at the chart, if it does pull back, I think we've established a couple of pretty good lows here. Off the gap up in September, we pulled back to 350. More recently in November, we pulled back to about 370, 375. If the, the selling were to kick back in, that's where I would look for this sideways consolidation to generate some more buyers. Now, I don't know if it's going to go back down there. I would watch the 20 day. It's probably going to open on Tuesday, slightly above that 20 day EMA. And if it does, and it trades below the 20 day intraday, where does it close? Does it come back up and close above? That'll be something to watch. All right, three you must see. Let's start with MDB, MongoDB. Look at the breakout. This is in software. The AD line is strong. The company's breaking out above that prior high. It's trending above its 20. I think the stock looks really good and it's showing nice relative strength versus software. So I wanted to point out this breakout. Next up, actually the next two, are two companies that reported the, the vaccine numbers uh, earlier in November. Here was the November 9th gap up for Pfizer. Notice about a week later, we went all the way back down, nearly filled that gap before turning right back around and coming back up near the gap up where we opened at. Um, and if you look at Moderna, mRNA, almost the same thing. Here was the November 16th gap up from about $89. Two days later, on Wednesday of that week, we were back down, filled the gap, and then look what happened after we filled the gap. So it doesn't really pay to chase these gaps. Many times you want to see how stocks trade after the gaps, and many times you can get them at their uh, gap fills. All right, that's it for today. Appreciate you all tuning in. I'll be back Wednesday at earningsbeats.com for your next Trading Places Live. Take care. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.